when we're talking about conditional probability, this tree looks really complicated. It's not. This means that for any tree you start here, what these numbers mean is that you could, we could get an M or an N or a Q, whatever, those just define events. So M might be that we buy a Buick and N might be that we buy a Toyota and Q might be that we buy a Honda. I mean, it could be anything, right? So there is a 30% chance that it's gonna be M. 0.3 is 0 0.30, that's 30%. There's a 40% chance we're gonna go with N and another 30% chance that it's gonna go with Q. In other words, the probability of M occurring is 0.3. That's all that means. Now, if we go with M, then there is a second choice to make. Uh, do we wanna get a stick shift or, a stand, or an automatic? I don't know, so there is a 20% chance Assuming that we did M, there's a 20% chance we're gonna do R and an 80% chance we're gonna do S. If we chose the N, then there is a 70% chance we'll go with R and a 30% chance we'll go with S. And if we got Q on the first choice, then there is now a 40% chance we'll go with R and a 60% chance we'll go with S. Now their question here is simply, what is the probability of Q intersect R? That means the probability of Q, of Q and R, that is gonna be the probability of Q, we know that's 30%, times, the probability of R given that we chose Q. You see, there's three different probabilities for R. Well, the probability is determined by what our first choice was. So we wanna make sure for this Q and R that we've got the Q part down and that we choose the correct R not the 20%, not the 70%, it has to be the 40%. So the probability that we got Q and R, that's the same thing as intersect R, is gonna be the probability of Q. So we take the 30% times the probability of R given Q. So going down the Q route, what is that R? That one is 40%, which amounts to 0.12. It's just pretty easy once you know what they want you to do. An experiment and two events are given. Now this experiment isn't necessarily a scientific experiment. This one is just involving flipping coins. Determine if the events are independent or dependent. This simply means, does the second uh, does the probability of the second event depend in any way, shape, or form on what happened with the first? If the penny lands on tails, well, wait a minute now. This says a penny and a nickel are flipped. Event A is that the penny lands on tails. Event B is that the penny lands on heads. Okay, this doesn't say the nickel. This says the penny. Okay, this is dependent. As a matter of fact, this is impossible. It doesn't say we're gonna flip the penny twice. It says we flip a penny and a nickel. And if the penny lands on tails, what is the probability that the penny lands on heads? Uh, zero. So because it said penny both times, they're getting sneaky here. These are dependent. That was sneaky. Always read the whole problem. 
Okay, here we got a table. We have a place that's serving lunch and dinner. The total just means they added this up for us. They don't always do that. So basically, this is our data here, 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 and here. The, this is these numbers added together, and this and this. These numbers are this added together, these two added together, and then these two added together. So this and this, the possibility that somebody either had lunch or dinner has to add up to the same amount as the possibility that they had good service or bad service, regardless of which meal they were having. Find the probability that the service was good given that the meal was dinner. We're looking for the probability that the service was good given that they were eating dinner. I can see how that might make a difference. Uh, you might have different waitresses serving lunch and dinner, and maybe one's a little better than the other. Uh, maybe by dinner time, the waitresses are tired and cranky. Let's see what happens. But the probability that it's good given that it was dinner means we're not worried about lunch. We're not even worried about the total. We're only worried about this. What is the probability that somebody got good service if they only ate dinner? Okay, there were 76 people that ate dinner. and 27 of them had good service. Notice that this is basically like this, good divided by dinner, or it's actually good and dinner divided by dinner, not all the goods. So it's the ones that had good and dinner divided by the ones that had dinner. And simplified fraction, let's see, 27 only divides by three, 76 does not divide by three. So this should already be reduced. Let's see what we get. Awesome. So this is similar. Political Action Club has surveyed 290 students, here's our 290 on your campus regarding the relationship between their political affiliation and their preference in the 2016 presidential election. The results are given in the following table. So if they were Democrats, they preferred candidate A. If they were Republicans, they preferred candidate B. If they were independent, they also preferred candidate A. Uh, here's the total Democrats, total Republicans, total independents, total for candidate A, total for candidate B, and this 290 will be, represent the total of the last call. It's the total of the totals in either direction, basically. So what are we looking for? If a student is selected randomly from those surveyed, so that would be out of how many? How many people were surveyed? Find the probability that the student is a Democrat, ah, given that the student preferred candidate B. Okay, we're only looking at the people that preferred candidate B. So we can do away with this. We can basically do away with this. Of the people who preferred candidate B, how many is that? 123. So the probability that it's a Democrat, given that they like candidate B, is gonna be the number who were for Democrat and candidate B divided not by the 290, but for the people who preferred candidate B. 
So 123 people preferred candidate B. And just from that list, how many were Democrats? 25. Now, let me point out that this is basically saying, here's our formula, the probability of D given B is the probability of both D and B. So the intersection of D and B, the intersection of D and B would be right here, divided by the probability of B, which is right here. Another way to write this, we could say that the probability of D given B multiplied, if we multiplied both sides by this P of B, doing a little algebra in here. So the probability of D given B times the probability of B is the probability of the intersection of those. We could even say the probability of B is the probability of the intersection divided by the probability of D, sorry, D given B. You can actually do algebra with these, but you don't have to. We've got the answer right here. Let's try it out. Hold your breath. They don't want the answer as a decimal, as a fraction. They want the answer as a decimal this time. So point three decimal places, 0 0.203. Let's see this. Let's read the whole problem. The graph given below, we don't see a graph yet, but here it is. Now we got it. The graph given below summarizes statistics regarding distracted drivers below the age of 40. So all of these are below the age of 40. Yeah, we got under 20, 20 to 29, 30 to 39. Who were involved in fatal crashes? Assuming that we are selecting a driver at random from the 2,771 tallied. That was nice of them to add that up for us. If the accident was related to phone use, what is the probability, if the action was related to phone use, what is the probability that the driver was over 29? What problem solving method should be used? How about draw pictures? How about be systematic? Okay. Selecting a driver at random from the 2,771 tallied if the accident was related to phone use. So this is saying basically given that it was related to phone use, find the probability of over 29. Okay, over 29 is over here. Non-cell phone distraction is the green. Cell phone distraction is the red. So we're looking for find P of over 29 given it was a phone distraction situation. Actually, we need to get the total number of people who had an accident related to phone use. Here's our denominator, the total phone use. And then the numerator will be the number of those that are over 29. So we're not interested in, in the greens, non-cell phone. We, we're not interested in the greens. Actually, we're only interested in the phone cell distraction. So the numerator is going to be the number of these people that were over 29. That's the 219. 
the denominator is going to be the total who had a wreck because they were mess messing with their phone. So it's going to be the 132 plus 267 plus 219. Now you see that? They're saying the accident was related to cell phone use. And out of those, what's the probability that the driver was over 29? So we want to know the number of people that were over 29 on their phone when they wrecked divided by the number of people that were on their phone when they wrecked. What have we got? 219 over, how do we want the answer? Three decimal places, so divide this out. Three decimal places would be 0.354, good job. Here's a new one. Imagine a subject is taking part in a study to test a new cold medicine. The probability that the drug the subject is taking is drug A, because this is a blind study, he doesn't know what he's taking, the probability of taking drug A is 20%. The probability of taking drug B is 30%. And the prob probability is on drug C is 50%. From past clinical trials, the probability that these drugs will improve their condition are 20% for A, 40% for B, and 80% for C. Now, if he's taking drug A, the probability that drug B or C will help him is kind of useless because he's not getting that. So the only thing we're interested in is if he takes drug A, what is the probability that he'll get improved or not? If he takes drug B, what is the probability for improvement or not? And same for drug C. So the first thing is we have to figure out the probabilities that he's taking any particular drug. It's going to be 20, 30, and 50 for A, B, and C. So we got 20, no, not this one, tw tw no, 20, 30, no. Okay, this is it. Let's double check it against the other. We got the 20, 30, 50. I know this is it, but let's look. The probability that these drugs will improve their condition are 20% for A. So if he takes drug A, the probability for improvement is 20%, which means the probability that he will not be improved is 80%. This times this notice is 0.04. This times this is 0.16. If he takes drug B, which was a 30% possibility, there's a 40% chance it'll help. So 40% for improvement, that's 60% for not improvement. So 0 0.3 times 0 0.4 is 0 0.12. 0 0.3 times 0 0.6 is 0.18. And then for drug C, which is 50%, we got an 80% chance for improvement, that's 0.40. 20% for no improvement, that's 0.10. If you add these up, and this is not necessary at all for this problem, but if you add these up, it's going to turn out to be 100%. Either he took drug A and he improved or he didn't, or he took drug B and he improved or he didn't, or he took drug C and he improved or he didn't. It has to be one of these because he know he, he was taking part in the test. So there is a 100% chance that he took one of these three drugs and that he either improved or didn't. That pretty well covers it. So let's look at one more problem. Imagine a subject is taking part in a study to study a new cold medicine. The subject taking D, part, uh, drug A has a 30%, B has a 40%, and C has a 30%. So let's create our own. He's either taking drug A, drug B, or drug C. The probability is taking drug A is 30%. Drug B is 40%. Drug C is 30%. 
from past clinical trials, the probability that these drugs will improve his conditions are A is 40%. So you, you could do this all at an angle or what. So improve here is 40%, which means not improve would be what? 60%. If he's taking drug B, the probability he's gonna improve is 40%, which again means the probability he'll not improve is 60%. And if he's taking drug C, there's a 60% chance he will improve and not improving on this one is 40%. So he's hoping he gets drug C, right? Now, what is the probability that he will improve? Okay, this is without knowing which drug he's taking. So here, this is an improve. This total probability is 0.12. Again, 0.18, I'm just multiplying across. This one's a 16, 0.40 times 0 0.60 is 0 0.24, 0 0.18, 0 0.12. The 0.12% up here is that he took drug A and improved. 18% he took drug B and didn't improve. 16% took drug B and improved. Okay, we're just looking for all the improves. So we're looking at this one, this one, and this one. So it's 0.12 is the probability that he improved from taking drug A, plus a 16% chance that he improved while he was on drug B, and an 18% chance that he improved and he was taking drug C. Looks like a 46% chance. Yes. So you can read a lot of information from these kind of trees. Now, once again, set up a tree just like that one. I don't care what the angles of the lines are. That has nothing to do with it. You're gonna purchase a DVD drive for your laptop. Assume 70% of the drives are made outside of the United States. So they're either made inside or outside. This is not an ABC, this is just A and B. So we've got outside and inside the US. Of the US made drives, 6% are defective. That's inside the US, right? So we have defectives. And let's just call these good. And again, for the ones made outside the US, they could be defective or they could be good. Get your percents filled in. And you're going to be looking for if your drive is defective, that would be here or here, find the probability that it is foreign made. So we're looking for the probability that it's outside the US given that it's defective. So we only wanna find the ones that are defective, that would be here and here, total those up, that's your denominator. And the ones that were outside the US from those would be this one right here. Right. Fill in your numbers, 
see how it goes. I suggest you do a similar problem on these and make sure you can do it completely on your own. And that's conditional probability. Have fun, that's the last of the probabilities we'll be doing. We've got one more chapter and we're done.